right then, hello and welcome back to Porsche Challenge. Going to continue on now with the easy championship. We now have the interactive tracks. Only four more races to do and then that is the easy championship complete. And then we'll, of course, we'll work on with the regular season and then the evil season after that. So uh, yeah, four more tracks. These tracks are slightly more difficult than the eight that we've already used or raced on. Uh, the tracks change with every single lap. Well, you'll see anyway when we get into it. So uh, as always, race number one comes from good old Stuttgart, race nine of 12. And as you can see, the whole track now is open. But is it? Mm, we'll have to wait and see. Are you ready? Are you ready indeed? Go, 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 go. go. And away we go. So with the interactive tracks, each of the paths open uh, within each lap. So one path might be open one lap and one might be open the other lap uh, and so on and so forth. So the right hand path is open first, which is fairly easy enough. So don't have to worry too much. But then at the next lap, the left hand path should open and so on and so forth. And there we go, coming up to the end of lap one already. And can we make it into third place? Yes, we can. All right, so there we go, three laps to go. So laps are slightly longer as well. I think it's four laps each for the USA and Stuttgart, and then five laps for Alpine and Japan. Oh no, this path is still open. I think it's on a timer, a global timer. Don't quote me on that. But we shall see. Ah, there you go. Now this path is open. Which is great, because this is the more twisty path. Which I'm not really good at. As you can see, let's get the handbrake turn right this time. Nope, completely botched it. Oh well. But you can see now what the uh, the tracks are like now. All the paths are different, so it's a uh, it's on a global time or just individual laps that the uh, the race changes. But we're already in the lead. We still got three laps or two laps to go. Uh, we got one minute twenty two on the clock. Oh, I don't know if we're gonna get to the next checkpoint in time. But there you go. So I hope you all had a lovely weekend. I was, oh, there you go. One path is closing, one is opening, which is good because you can actually see the barriers closing and opening individually. Um, but yeah, I hope you all had a lovely weekend. I was, of course, at the Thruxton Aerodrome for the uh, British Touring Car Championship. And it was phenomenal. Absolutely awesome. I was with there, um, there with a, few good friends we had uh, josh of the moaning yorkshireman we had james of jams jam sankith brad of viper racing and we also had adam and matt as well and uh yeah it was an absolutely wonderful weekend and i've just completely destroyed this whoa i didn't want to go in reverse okay yeah i completely destroyed that corner whoops uh but yeah it was an absolutely awesome weekend uh got some good footage uh then my phone died the battery died uh we had like two races to go um, I was a bit miffed actually during the Formula 4 race. We had uh, quite a good battle. Abby Pulling was coming up through the field. So I put my camera down for a few seconds just to have a drink. And uh, lo and behold, Abby Pulling tries to go on the inside of another car, clips a rear wheel of him, and he decides to go for a rollover. And I completely missed it on camera. So, oh well. You know, these things were meant to try us and all that gubbins, but yeah, it was an absolutely wonderful weekend. Besides the fact that, now if you've ever been to Thruxton before, you know it's very wide open. There's not really any places to shelter. And uh, because of that, the wind was ice cold. It was absolutely bitterly cold. Uh, but then when the sun came out, it was boiling hot. And uh, none of us realized that we were getting quite as burnt as we were. <laughs> and by the end of the last day, uh, yeah, we all look like lobsters. My face is incredibly burnt. My hands are burnt. And uh, yeah, it is uh, rather painful and rather uncomfortable. So, but yeah, it was just a wonderful weekend. A weekend definitely to remember. It was just amazing. Um, hopefully, we're going to be uh, doing this as a yearly thing as well. 
So, uh, yeah, we'll be going again next year for the weekend. Uh, and, yeah, it was just absolutely wonderful. Couldn't have been any better. We only had a few little spots of rain during the whole weekend. But, yeah, could, couldn't have been a better weekend. Hopefully next year it'll be a, a little bit warmer. Because uh, it was getting a little bit annoying that when the sun came out, everyone had to take off their coats and everything. And, uh, yeah, it was baking hot. And then as soon as we got a little bit of cloud cover, it was absolutely bitterly cold. So, uh, yeah, it was a bit of an annoyance. But, again, these things were meant to try us, so... Anyway, race two in the United States of America. And you'll see now what some of the uh, the shorter paths as well, like the viaduct, as my driver starts complaining, bitching, and moaning about his bag stew. And is the bridge open? No, it is not. Okay. Now, you can get lucky as well, because sometimes the barrier opens as the other drivers are taking this path. And uh, you can actually get the jump on them a little bit. And you see those vans parked on the side of the track. They will come into play uh, within the next lap or so. There we go. Lap one complete. Now, is the viaduct open? Let's have a gander, shall we? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. Stay off to the water, please. And completely botched it up anyway. Oh, well. Oh, we got stuck on the tram. That's good. Right, up into second. Is the bridge open? Yes, it is. There we go. So yeah, I'll try and get some of the footage from the weekend uh, off the cameras and everything and posted and what have you. Um, I do have a lot of footage of uh, the other British touring car events from Brands Hatch and all this lot uh, that I haven't actually got around to getting off the cameras or anything yet. And this is going back to the, the races at Brands Hatch from 2018. So I've got a lot of footage to upload, and 2016 as well, I think. So, uh, yeah, I've got a lot of real-life touring car footage to get uploaded and posted and edited and everything else. But, you know me, I'm just too lazy and I procrastinate too much. So my eyesight is a bit naff, but there you go. Anyway, final lap. I'm not sure if the viaduct is open on this one. No, it's not. Okay, that was completely pointless. But we are so far in the lead. There you go. It is nice as well, the drivers have their own little animations. They throw their arms up in the air as if it's your fault when they crash into you. Now, I think the bridge is going to be closed on this lap. Oh, that would have been perfect if I hadn't hit the wall. But trams are in the way again. Yep, the bridge is closed. Now, the two vans that were parked on the side of the track before have now moved. Or they will move. Oh, no, they haven't moved on this one, though. No, it's only on the regular one. They stay there on the easy mode, which is good. Uh, during the regular championship and the evil championship, with each lap, they move across the circuit and they get in your way. But there we go. We get another victory. Brilliant. Brilliant indeed. And a lap record of a 48 seconds flat. How wonderful. Next race is in the Alpine. Hooray. One of the more difficult races to do in the championship. Uh, because of the paths that open and the shortcuts that open. Um, it's hard to pick which one to go on, but yeah, you can see so many different paths you can take, uh, which can be a bit of a pain, but oh well, we'll work on it. But only two races to go anyway in the regular championship. 
Oh, who is this? We have the Stig's brother. Test driver. Yeah, the fastest car in the game. But, of course, this is easy championship mode, so we don't have to worry about him. But he's a bit like the blue car anyway. He's a bit of a pain. You can drop him back quite a bit and then he catches up. But, he, again, on the easy championship, he doesn't really overtake you. And if he does, he just drops back straight away. So you don't really have to worry about him at all. Slowly catching up to the yellow machine. And no, I did make a mistake. I thought these races would be five laps in length. Because they did increase the laps on the, uh, the previous four circuits. But no, they stay four laps, a whole lot of them. And now we go this away. Ha ha ha, this away. Ha ha ha, that away. And then this path is open. A little shortcut. That I completely ballsed up. But that's alright. I got a bit confused on what path to take there. I was like, oh, do I go into the other tunnel? But then, no, you don't. There we go. And you'll notice as well that this uh, part of the circuit as well that we're coming up to in a minute, near the end, uh, you'll see the, the boulders that have been placed on the circuit. Is the church open yet? No, it is not. Get out of the way, please. Beeping at me, how dare you? Ah, there's that snowplow I was talking about. He's the one that's going to clear all that snow out of the way. There's a boulder. It's only one on easy mode, I think. Unless they add another one later on, on the next lap. Two laps to go. That path is still closed off, so we have to go on the longer version. The gate is closed as well, so we have to go this way. See, all the paths change with each lap. So it's uh, a bit of a bargain, or a bit of a... A Russian roulette on what path you have to take. Oh, there's that puddle of water I was mentioning that gets bigger and bigger with each lap as well. Oh, the car's understeering a bit. By rights, a church should be open. No, it is not. It's still closed. Okay. And where's the snowplow? He's still there. No, just that one boulder still. Okay, so this lap is probably going to guarantee the church section to be open. But we'll see. And that path is still closed off, so again, we're going to have to go the long way around. And the gate is open this time. Hooray! Nice little shortcut. see the uh, the black car trying to catch up well he does catch up but again he doesn't actually overtake so it's not a problem at all and are the doors of the church open they were but i didn't go into it because i'm completely stupid and i believe because of that, I've just destroyed the race. Oh no. There's second place. 
But yes, I have destroyed the race myself because of bloody... Oh, well, that's a bit of a pain. Bad luck, pal. Bad luck indeed. Yeah, so I'm going to have to go through that again because uh, it looked like the church was closed, but it wasn't. The doors were actually open, but I didn't see until I went past, so that's a bit of a pain. But no worries, I'll get through that again, get onto the final lap, and then uh, I'll meet you for uh, the restart. So yeah, see you in just a moment. And here we are then on the final lap once again. So uh, this time I won't be a fool and not go into the church shortcut. So I have checked with each of the other laps and yeah, the doors have been closed. So this time they should definitely be open. But we'll see when we get up close. Going this away. Crashing into everything, as per norm. And yeah, there we go. And that is the uh, section that was closed off, so... Yeah, there you go. So, because of that stupid mistake previously... Uh, yeah, I completely missed a shortcut and uh, ruined the race for myself. So, my first loss, but... We get the victory in the end anyway. Brilliant indeed. So now we head back off to Japan for the final race. And uh, yeah, there we go. So best lap time number 51 seconds. So not too bad at all. Hooray. And this one is... I would say that this is the most difficult one because of the blind corners. that You've seen from episode 2 where I went into the wrong corner before. I had to reverse, but it shouldn't be too bad. But we'll see. And off we go. So as you can see, the Stig is completely uh, useless. He's as slow as the rest of them, but when he gets back, he's got a lot more acceleration than the blue car, for example. Um, but yeah, he, he slows down to a crawl when he gets in front of you, so it gives you a, a full sense of security when you want to catch up to him, but there you go. Right, only made it up to fourth. And this section is blocked off. Luckily, you can hear the voice of the warning uh, around the previous corner, so you know it's blocked off already. And there we go, that is a lap complete. Is this path open? And it looks like it isn't. No. Oh, balls. Okay. Hey, hey indeed. Yeah, so uh, it's hard to tell sometimes if the path is open or not because that is a blind corner. So you can only see part of the wall. But it's not a problem. Even with the Stig in the race now, we'll be able to catch up to him. No problem. This is not like... Uh, Mario Kart or something, for example, where if the driver gets ahead of you, then you can't catch up to him at all. No, they still slow down to a crawl. As you can see, he's just up ahead on the radar. And there he is. And there's the leader as well. And now he just passes over. It's it's so cool that you can actually see the barriers rise. And another lap complete. Do I take my chances? Ah, yes, it is open now. Hooray. 
There you go, that was exciting, wasn't it? And it brings us out here. Hooray! Oh, and that path is closed, okay. See, I don't really use my brakes much. Oh, and that one's closed off again. As you can see, he's still behind. But he's a bit of a dweeb. He doesn't know what he's doing. Risk it, is that path still open? No, it is not. Sometimes they catch you out. It is all completely random. It's either done by a global timer or it is uh, randomized because sometimes the path could stay open for two laps and then close, but other times it's only one lap. I noticed when I was restarting the race at Alpine as well. I needed to go on the long way around the uh, longer part of the circuit on lap number one, whereas before it was a shorter regular circuit layout. So again, it's either done on global timing or it's just completely randomized on what path you can take. But no worries, coming up to the end now anyway. And this race took so long that the uh, the music had to fade out and fade back in again. But there we go. That is the championship done. Or the easy championship done anyway. So, yeah. And there is a good old Stig behind as well. Or Test Driver. You're a champion. You're a winner. Indeed. Thank you. Now we should get an outro sequence. Or not. Ah, here we go. Yeah, and it takes you through a load of scenes as well with uh, the old Le Mans and all different Porsche machi machines. The Dakar Porsche, of course. Ah, the good old 911. The uh, IROC series. GT Le Mans again. as he goes past. Oh, and there's more IROC. There's the uh, 911 Dakar. The running start. That was uh, always a staple of Le Mans back in the day before they stopped doing it. And then the outro just completely cuts off. There we go. Now that changes. When you win the championship... Oh, now challenge the mirror mode. Ooh, shall we do mirror mode? Uh, not yet. No. We're not going to do mirror mode just yet. We're going to do classic for now. Um, but we're going to do another championship, of course. We're going to do uh, the usual championship or, or the regular championship. We've finished easy mode. Um, but we're going to use a different character. So we've had Dan. And it's going to be up to you lot on what character we choose. So we can have Rachel. We can have Beats. We can have Nikita. Marco. And Takabo. So uh, it's up to you. So we can have a purple car, a green car, a yellow car, a blue car, or a red car. Your choice. So uh, yeah, I'll leave it here for now. Thank you very much for watching as always. And we'll be back next time for some good old regular championship mode, which is slightly harder, a few more obstacles in the way, but uh, it should still be fairly simple. Anyway, thank you very much for watching as always, and I will see you all next time. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you then.